and that's going to be different. Again, if you're if you're front running, you may have that you, you may have that uh, that opinion. If you're not front running, then it's not a problem because price never technically hit the 786. So it all depends on the trader and uh and your entry, your your the way you go about your entries. Um, I had two ciphers on the euro dollar and pound yen, which missed entries by two pips. I had doubt on what I did wrong, but I will take note of the situation now. Yeah, hey, here, here's the thing, right? If price action, if you have a, if you have a level, or pr- if you have an entry on a cipher pattern, and the market turns around right before it, did you do anything wrong? Yeah. So why are you, why are you thinking that you did something wrong? Why are we so quick to, to push blame on ourselves? Can we control where the market goes to? Can we control if the market reverses a pip away from our entry? No. Right? We we got we got to break this 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 thought process that every time things don't go our way, we did something wrong. Now don't get me wrong, there there are some times where that's the case, right? If you sabotage yourself, if you have entries in the wrong place, if you drew a Fibonacci on wrong, if you put a stop order at a, a half an ATR versus a one ATR, if you read a, if you misread the decimal on an ATR and you put it too close, right? Those are mistakes that are our fault, right? And that's when we do our review. We, we look over everything. We say, okay, did I do everything right? But if you did everything right, if you followed your rules, if you review your trade and say, okay, I measured out the cipher correctly. I have my Fibonacci's on. I have my orders on. I have my stops right, my targets right. And the market just said, eh, no, I'm not going to get to your entry. What more can you do? Anything else that you could do would be sabotaging yourself. What more can you do? I mean, you could do this. I had a friend that used to start creeping targets earlier, right? He was trading a strategy and one time price came about a pip away from his target. He said, "Ah, oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start moving my targets about five pips ahead just to take advantage of that." So he moves his he moves his uh, his targets five pips ahead on the next trade. Price action comes two pips away from his new target. Ah, oh, man, just missed me again. I knew I had him in the wrong place. I'm gonna move him five more pips ahead, right? So he's ten pips ahead now, right? He did this about four or five times, right? By the time it was all said and done. He had reduced his target, what his target was supposed to be, by 50%. Because every time price action would, quote unquote, just miss, he thought he was doing something wrong and he would start shortening those targets. Long story short, he had a good month. High win percentage. But he left 500 pips on the table. So you could do that. If you feel you're at fault, you could do that. But it's not always our fault. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying that there isn't stuff you can do to get better. Like sometimes, you know, especially if it's like a structure-based trade, right? Um, you know, advanced pairs is a little bit different because you guys are using Fibonacci. Those are kind of set in stone, black or white. But, you know, sometimes there'll be a structure-based trade where you're taking targets at a level of structure. And maybe you 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 miss another level of structure. You just your eyes just don't catch it. In hindsight, you're like, oh man, should have paid attention to that. That's doable. But if price misses your entry by two pips, no reason to blame yourself. Market just didn't do it. Won't be the last time. I can promise you that. <laughs> Won't be the last time price almost hits your entries. And even worse, you'll have times where price does hit your entries. You just don't get filled, right? Remember that spread we just talked about? You have plenty of times where price, you, you look at your chart and you're like, oh yeah, filled and rolled over. And you bring up your little uh, your little active trade management deal and you're like, why are, my, why are my limit orders still on there? And you realize you never got filled because the spread didn't get triggered. And you're like, come on, man. Welcome to welcome to trading. Welcome to trading. So in a real time scenario, when we are practicing and then going into backtest mode, we do have to we do have to look for this front running thing. It's up to you. 
You can choose whether to front run or whether to not front run. If you are going to front run, you can choose how much to front run by. That is completely up to you. There is no wrong or right answer there. That is a decision that you must make. And the next question is, well, Keel, what's the best way to do it? There is no best. So that's something you're going to have to decide, whether you want to front run or whether you don't. Zach says, you've got to draw the line in the sand somewhere, though, Manish. You're good, just wasn't your day. Yep, exactly. Not always our fault. No such thing as perfection in the market. That's why perfectionists have a hard time trading. Did you guys know that? It's much harder for a perfectionist to become a successful trader than a non-perfectionist. Very, very, very intelligent people have a, a harder time in general trading than those of lesser intelligence obviously there's a scale you can if you know there's a there's a point where you have such low intelligence that you just shouldn't be doing this but that is actually the case believe it or not believe it or not we're meant to think that the smartest people are are the best traders though but psychologically it makes a difference right because if you are very, very, very smart, you're probably not used to being what? Think about the smartest person in your classroom growing up. You're not used to being wrong, right? And when you are wrong, there's always an answer, right? Those who are very, very smart, when they are wrong, what's the first thing they do? They go find the answer so they can learn, right? That's what we're supposed to do. You get the wrong answer, you learn what the right one is. The problem is, right? In trading, we can be wrong and right at the same time. We can be 100% right in what we do, but feel wrong because the market doesn't do what we expect. And for the person that is super, super, super intelligent, they don't, know, they don't really know how to handle being wrong, that's going to be a big problem because they're going to go looking for an answer. And guess what they're going to find? A nothing burger. And that can mess with people. I'm not saying smart people can't be good traders, don't get me wrong. You should you need to be intelligent. But I'm talking about those people, we all have those friends. Those people that are super, super, super high IQ, know everything, you know, you can't tell them a different opinion on anything because they just won't accept it. Those type of people. They're gonna have a problem because you can be right and wrong at the same time in the market. <laughs> you could be right and wrong at the same time in the market. And at some point, you just have to accept it. some point, you have to accept it. I did everything right, and guess what? It just didn't work out. And you have to take that as a positive. Um, won't it hurt as a trader? Because if I'm not wrong, Cypher comes very close on hourly time frame. And if we miss it, this will be one. This will be like we miss an opportunity. No, you, you didn't miss an opportunity because it didn't fill. Not a missed opportunity at all. It didn't, it didn't fill your orders. It technically wasn't a cipher. Didn't hit your orders, right? Wasn't a cipher. It was a very close to a cipher. You didn't actually miss it. Price just didn't fill you. Or didn't get to where you expected it. You didn't miss it. Missing it would be you looking at this cipher and you not putting orders on, then it reversing and be like, oh crap, I was supposed to take this trade. That's missing it. If price action comes and doesn't fill you, what can you do? What else, what else can you do, guys? Aside from go down the path that I just told you about my buddy, what else can you do? Can you control price? Can you can you give your your computer stream a, 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 a stern talking to and say, hey, stop. Get up there right now. I mean, I guess you can. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Although I am a believer in yelling at price to get to your targets. I'm, I'm kind of that guy. You get two pips away. You start yelling at your screen. It kind of gets it going. I am a believer in that. But yeah, 
So you can't look at it as a missed opportunity. You can't beat yourself up. You can't say, what was me? I suck as a trader. What can I do better? There's nothing you can do. Sorry. You can front run orders. You can make that a rule. You can, you can go through your back testing. You can say that, hey, I've got 20 trading opportunities where I just missed by one pip. Maybe you want to implement a rule where you say, okay, well, I'm going to start front running my orders by two pips. Instead of entering right at the 786, I'm going to enter two pips prior to the 786. But guess what's still going to happen? You're still going to have a scenario where guess what? Price comes two pips before your front ran orders. And now you're still in the same boat. It's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. May not happen as much, but it's always going to happen. So sometimes you got to accept it. Yeah. Got to sit back and be like, you know, clap the market up. Got me. Good job. Tease. Hmm.